G'day guys and welcome back to the Back Pocket Plug Up Podcast. This is a podcast for the Back Pocket Battlers, made by the Back Pocket Battlers. I tell you what, if it was called the Back Pocket Plug Up Podcast and it was for the, the Ford Flankers, it would be quite the surprise. Yeah, it would be absolutely off brand. Oh, I tell you what, uh, me being a Back Pocket Plugger myself, played over the weekend for the mighty Banyul Bears Football Club, had... One disposal to three quarter time because we were up by two hundred points against the Fitzroy Stars, but that's what a plugger does. Yeah, it's one of those days. Y- yep. You take the good with the bad. More than often, I'm <laughs> happy to play my role, and that role is usually three disposals. But I keep my man quiet, which is important because we've won. We've won by a goal. Yeah, and him being silenced from the game is helpful. But yep. a two hundred point win, I wouldn't mind moving the magnets around. Let's let's move <laughs> the board. Why would Borgy, if you're watching, get us on a forward flank, mate? Real selfless footy. Very very selfless footy. Uh. Not nearly as selfless as what we have done to gi- do a giveaway in our very first show. And I had to pump up our own tyres with the with the selfless call. But, geez, we're almost God amongst men with what we've done. Yeah, so last show you went to the markets, real trendy market. Uh, not even tre- – I thought it was going to be trendy. It was the opposite. It was hippie. It was the opposite. Oh, really? I yeah, know nice. that Indy has become the trend. Yeah, but yeah. One thing I didn't expect to see there, like we're talking like there's pottery, there's like tarot card readings, there's <laughs> – just all sorts of things. Yeah. Uh, every, a lot of things made of hemp. I'm not sure what that is. But, yeah, I'm not sure either. Um, but yeah, there was just a little stall that had the little bits and pieces for 50 cents and they had a bunch of old footy cards and we're talking the most random football of yours. They weren't good footy cards and we're not talking Nick Reed no, or, no. or Wayne Carey. No. Uh, and last week we did a giveaway. Whoever can come up with the most random footballer that gives us a good giggle, we'll get we'll get the footy cards. Mm. We'll sign him. Not that anyone wants our award. Oh, I'll sign him. Yeah, sign him for it. Uh, and that uh, goes to my boy, as if it was ever in doubt, Jackie Trainer, who yeah. named Paul Bauer. Yeah. So there was there was some great ones. Some great ones when I went through. Absolutely unbelievable uh, response. And it's good to know that uh, you know the people have watched all the way through. There was a North Melbourne one that re- that are Jess Sinclair. Jess you, Sinclair, great, great shout. You know why that got me good? Because there were some other good ones in there, like you know your Barnaby Frenches. Ten Ten Diamond Sungu. Yeah, ten diamonds. I don't Zungu. know why I said that. Really <laughs> yeah, ten, ten, you're really pronouncing each syllable there. <laughs> really ten struggling to come out of Zungu. my mouth. Uh, but a lot of these ones, like your Barnaby Frenches, they come up all the time when you're naming random players. Yeah, Jess, almost cliche. Cliche. Yeah, almost becomes so uh, typical that it's no longer the forgotten footballer that is almost you remembered know, too much yeah. before being forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas Jess Sinclair is, was forgotten to me, so that was, that was a good one. But it has gone to Paul Bauer, Jackie Trainer. You can call. call Carlton bias all you like. <laughs> Maybe it is. Um, another point I wanted to touch on, and this could lead absolutely nowhere, Yep, is that <laughs> it's a long journey up from uh, the beautiful suburb of Watsonia to, to lovely Geelong, yep. God's country, to yep. come up here. Yep. Uh, and it's not, it's not free. Things aren't cheap. Petrol's not free. We, we live in an economy where it's 160 cents per litre to get up beer. Outrageous. Atrocious. Atrocious for a, u- for a uni student up in Kama. <laughs> uh, so I have some. I have a proposal on the board and I'm not about to ask you to transfer me $20. Yeah, good. Uh, is it too early <laughs> to find a sponsor for the Back Pocket Plugger podcast? It's never too early. I, th- I, think, we fo- I think we put the call out. Well, I'm going to be honest. The curtains don't pay for themselves. Yeah, if, exactly. if you look, you know. The expensive curtain. Oh, my skin, <laughs> my smash Davos on toast twice a week. That was twi- almost twice a day is what we're bordering on now. Mm, yeah. It's not going to pay for itself. So if you know anyone that's looking to sponsor the show, it's almost going to go going to go gangbusters. I don't know. Well, yeah, the trajectory. We've been going worldwide before. Oh, which, you know, it's definitely on the cards. Pitbull type of Mark Pitney. They're calling Mister Worldwide. Are they? I'm not completely sure why. It couldn't look anything less like Pitbull. Battle's hard. Pit, Pitter. He does battle. He does battle hard, Pitter, mate. Eh? Are we going to move on to the winners and grinners of this week? Uh, we're winners <laughs> and grinners. The Blue Baggers and the Demons. Unbelievable. I was going to say last week. Yeah. Um, I didn't put it in the show, but I was going to say, well, I was going to kick off the show by saying, not often we're both happy. I wonder. Uh, so I'm 23. You're a couple of years older than that. Yeah. Mature age 25. You are. Uh, I wonder how many rounds or what percentage of games we've witnessed or rounds where Carlton and Melbourne are both, because we've had some tumultuous times yep. between the two of us. I would like to see a stat of how uh, how how many weeks our teams went without one win. It is a miracle, a miracle that we are both as staunch and loyal supporters as what we are. Because 
when you're a kid, you're growing up, you're in school, all your mates <laughs> talk. You, there are that many bandwagon supporters in primary school. They just jump yep. to the winning team. Yeah. So you're sitting there, and where wooden spoon is year after year in other teams, it just seems like everyone's supporting the Premier because mm. everyone jumps ship. It is a miracle we've stayed stayed strong. I know. Yeah. I know for you more than anyone. For me, my old man forced me. If I didn't support Carlton, true story, my brother wanted to support Essendon and dad kicked me out of the house. It was in primary school. It's got to be done. Packed his bags, closed the door, it was raining outside. Yep. And he refused to let him back in until he supports Carlton. That's mm. true story. Yep. That was my lifestyle. You didn't really have the same influence. How have you stuck with the days for so long? <sighs> well, I, I don't know. I, I, I just loved them. Absolutely loved them. So dad always, you know, went for them since he got over from Scotland, 1964. Yep. Looked around at the school. There was, you know, red and blue streamers because it was their last flag. Yeah. So he's rocked up to school. Everyone's going, who are you going for? He goes, the, well, the red and blue ones, you know. And it's amazing you being behind enemy lines. You're in Geelong. You know, it's almost like Geelong's a little, little Adelaide. Yeah. yeah it's like an Adelaide or, you know, where, yeah. Yeah, no, uh, very difficult through the 2000s yeah. when we're getting smacked by near 200 points. Oh, no. Sort of, uh, you know, what's... Yeah, uh, Fitzroy Stars, yeah, yeah, Fitzroy's the Daniel Bears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. that's sort of like, territory. Yeah. Um, it would have been good to get one back this week because we do... You would still have the flashbacks. You'd still keep you up at night. Middle, you'd, seen the, you'd be seeing a psychologist to try and still get over that tumultuous... I've used tumultuous twice now. That's a good word. The Geelong win over the days, which was about 250-odd points. What was it? Uh, yeah, 186. 186 is a new 250, I think. It was 100 at half time. <laughs> that is... <laughs> Imagine un- going to the footy. I went I went with all my mates um, down in Geelong, obviously, sitting there. It's 100 at half time. Yeah. And you're just going, it's not by, you know, how, how far, it's how much. You have same. done unbelievable to support them through that. And now you're reaping the rewards. Absolutely. So we went to the game on Sunday. We did. I done a D scar for the first time in my life. <laughs> so I, I went with... Uh, three r- really heavy uh, Geelong supporters, like real. Would you say one eyed? Uh, I'd say no eyes. Yeah, <laughs> some, of the, some of the stuff they were yelling completely out completely internalised. <laughs> they uh, some of the commentary was rather eye opening for me. Close eyes for them. <laughs> um, one of my good mates, uh, growing up, Mac Fox. He uh, Foxy, Foxy, Fucker. Um, he was in the same boat as me, big Tigers fan growing up. Um, and he went through the same thing where the Tigers lost to Geelong by 150 points, getting rolled. And then he's just won three of the last four premierships. So yeah. he always messages me when he sees me going to a Geelong D's game. And then after we won... Just he, give, giving you the moral support. Yeah, after, You're not alone, mate. I'm <laughs> with you. After we, uh, after we won on Sunday, he just replied. He's like, geez, the V-line would have been a bit quiet on the way yeah. back. <laughs> See, that's something I've never had to consider. Obviously, being a Carlton supporter from Melbourne, Living in Melbourne, going to school in Melbourne, it was always, you know, a mix of teams. There'd probably be more people supporting the Premier from the previous year. Yeah. But it was always a mix. But for you, it would have been 99% of people at Geelong supporters. Yeah, at Auskick, it was like, I would say 80% Geelong and then some Tigers, Essendon, Pies. And then I like there was no Melbourne. Yeah. So I'd go to school. And when I was younger, this is getting quite deep on the back pocket. Uh, yeah, it uh, is, plug a podcast. Mm. But w- when I was going, when I was younger, I was eight or nine, I'd get to the MCG and see... 30,000 people with the D stuff on. Yeah. And it would make me be at school going, They're at, I can go to a place where there's more of us. You've <laughs> told me, I've asked you before, what's your happy place, your favourite place on the planet, and you always tell me the MCG. Yeah. Is that because it gives you that sense of, that tribal sense of belonging? I don't know. It's the smell, like the grass, that grassy, mm. beery MCG smell is unbelievable. It's just everything. I, it's the Coliseum. The two great scents. <laughs> bottle that up, bottle that up, Dolce and Gabbana, grass and beer. <laughs> but it's where the- it's Fragrance where, for men. <laughs> it's where the warriors go and compete. Isn't it? It's a Coliseum. Oh, I love, love the MCG. But talking more specifically about your boys of days, because I've long been a, I wouldn't say a critic, but I'd like to think that I'm nice and honest about the days. I, I, I've Not that you ever tend to take the lid off too early, but if you ever do start to get a little bit excited, I can pull yeah. it into line and yeah. say, nah, he's the deficiencies of the days, mm. but I'm a believer. I'm a truster. I back his now. I have gained a lot of trust. I know we were speaking about it on the vlog and at the game. Um, you know, th- th- third quarter, the cats are coming. And 12 months ago, I would turn to you and I would have said, it's over. We're done. We've run out of legs. Yeah. But I turned to you on Sunday um, after just a blanketed, uh, professional, mature performance for three quarters. During the third quarter, the cats start coming back. I turned to you and I'm like, 
I have trust in them now. Like I, the, the maturity that they've shown over the last year, and I'm talking like middle of last season onwards, there's a maturity um, about the way they go about it. I turn to you and I'm like, I just get the feeling we get it done. Yeah. I know the Cats were underdone and um, they had a few outs and, you know, they only had the six-day break. There was a lot of excuses for the Cattery, but I was really impressed and it felt like a genuine scalp. I don't think there were any excuses for the Cattery. I would give them an excuse if they were playing three rounds of electrifying footy. We get to this round and they had a couple of outs, they had the five-day break and then they played the poor game. Yeah. Then I go, oh, yep, here's the excuses. But they've had three very poor rounds to open the season. Yeah, they have, yep. They've looked slow. They're turning, they're, they haven't adapted to the new game style. They're not streaming out the half-back line. Yep. It's almost like they've gone backwards. They've gone, <laughs> they, Chris Scott's gone, you can shove it up your ass. I'm not playing this exciting <laughs> brand. We're going even slower. It's almost like he's purposely being edgy. Every, yeah. every time they t- chat to him in a press conference, instead of him going, like his responses are like purposely like, he, he said in the last press conference, I watched it just to see if he'd pump up the days for me. But yeah. he, 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 res- he responded by saying, yeah, I don't think there's anything to suggest that the fast pace is necessarily going to win you more games. And that might not that might be true, but mm. it's just so funny how stubborn he is by not flicking the switch because when they went fast in that third quarter, they caught us off guard. Getting it into Tomahawk quickly, I just... I was listening into SEN uh, and they... Did had, you call up this week? No, I didn't call up this week. <laughs> I do enjoy the call up. But they um, they were chatting to... They chatted to a D's player this week. I can't remember. It was a fringe player. Yeah. And the week before they chatted... When they lost to Adelaide, they chatted to an Adelaide player. Yep. And both players said that they Geelong were most dangerous when they moved the ball in quickly. When you're one-on-one with the Tomahawk and the ball's coming in, and you'd be shitting yourself coming yeah. quickly. But when they go slow, it gives them time to set up. Oh, I reckon you we, we're on the money here. And Chris, this is me time for Chris Scott. Mm. You're all going to go quick. Fuck yeah, I'm going slow. <laughs> I think Scotty, that's what Scotty's up to. Adapt or perish, Scotty. Well, the only thing is that I'll say is I've written Geelong off 150 times over the last 10 years and it's from a hu- it's from a place of hope. Yeah. Like I go, you know, it's middle of 2013, they're battling a bit and I go, geez, they're done. Would you say you hate Geelong? Um deep down the uh, like deep down I I do. <laughs> 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 you were uh, expecting a real political answer. I was, I, I was fully anticipating a, oh, look, you know, hate's a very strong word. Do I dislike them? Perhaps there is some negativity in my heart. But no, you just go, you just flat out said. But it, it it is, I hate 2005 to 2017. Yep. But I actually like the new crop. I yep. like, oh, I love Geordie Clark. I love Big Sav. Yep. Um, and, and this is from me going to like Auskick clinics and some of the players being a bit arrogant. This is from me losing by 200 points and getting bullied for a year yeah. and a half, you know. So th- there is this like, yeah, this angst towards the club, but I actually like them now. And I, as much as I do want to write them off this season, I won't because I just get the feeling when they get the, the cogs turning, they're going to be dangerous and they just will. They just will. But you are right. The young tatters do look good, but the D's... I mean, there are no holes. There are no holes anywhere as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it, but it's been a long time coming. Yeah. So um, you know how people go, my success wasn't an overnight success. You know, it's, it was a 10-year success. It wasn't an overnight. And it feels like that in terms of like 2018, it was a young group that overachieved. Yeah. And I don't want to say that as an excuse, but I think you can just tell that they got the best out of themselves that season. Yeah. Bad pre-season into 2019, they were just all underdone and there were still people improving throughout that period. And then in 2020, they flicked the switch and I think in the hub, we were eight and three or something. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, it was eight, eight and five. But we had a really good back end of the season and it looked really good. Like defensively, def- defensively in the forward line, we're in like the top two or three ranked, you know, stats wise. Defensively in the midfield, we're the top, and then defensively in defence. <laughs> <laughs> yes, defensively Jeez. good everywhere. Jeez. Defensively good everywhere. Why McDonald's. would you tune into on the couch when you can <laughs> listen to this? Um, yeah, defensively all across the board, we're really tight and really sound. And <laughs> that is, that is. Jesus, oh Do- no. Dossy, oh, I'm going to be honest <laughs> oh, with you. No. I'm going to hit you right between the eyes. Yeah. Right between the eyes. That has to be the worst analysis of football. <laughs> yeah. I've ever heard him all up. Nah. That is the least insightful bit of bit of <laughs> chin wagging, bit of tripe. That is, that'd be better suited to drivel. Well, the other podcasts. That wasn't this. good, was it? No. 
But uh, I'm get where you're coming from. But what I'm trying to say is you're like, defensively uh, good everywhere across the board. But I know when you say like, if I said, "Oh, we're defensively good," people probably think, "Yeah, Stephen May and Jake Lever." But I'm talking your Alex Neil Bullens, your Charlie Spargos, your Kaseya Pickett's in the forward line. The way we lock it in now, it's gone to another level, and it is of the elk of like a full team defensive outfit, sort of Richmondy pressure. Richmondy, uh, and the way Richmond set up from the back line as well, it's. I would say it's got elements of that, like yep. that system. Yeah. Um, uh, but what what about when we went to the G? So we went to the G. I don't want to harp on about the D's game too long, but we had a bit of a run in. There was almost, I don't think it'd be <laughs> too far to say we had an altercation, nearly. <laughs> MCC members, 10 rows from the front, pouring rain. You wouldn't expect MCC members altercation, you know. Especially from an old lady. It was an old lady. So to to give the context, uh, we went to the you know footy. We we belted an old lady. Well, we were close. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at the MCC members. Uh, have I dropped that? A couple of MCC members, twenty year wait. <laughs> uh, we're at, we're at the members, and um, we were talking to this old. I thought they were a couple, but it was a mum and son. So yep. the son was fifty. Mum was well, 70, seventy. I guess. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> um, seven a. Jim Bur- Jimmy Bourbon, Jimmy Bourbon, <laughs> Jimmy Beam, can of bourbon. Yeah. Um, and so she was sort of turning around and... Um, There's something about bourbon drinkers. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Well, she would have been up for Chons. Yeah, she, she would have been, she's absolutely. been on the bourbons all day, but lovely. Lovely. They were lovely. We, we talked to them. They were from Sydney. They came down to Melbourne. Um, the, the son was getting around the Ds. The mum had got a cat scarf. She told us she was a Swan supporter, yep. uh, had a lovely, lovely chat. So th- throughout the first half, everything was fine. Yep. At halftime, she's turned around having a bit of a chat with the boys. And this is Billy Olga clinic time. He yep. was just – she was going, so are Melbourne very good? And Bill was like, no, 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 they're terrible. And um, and he was putting on a clinic and, and just sort of um, just eating up any question she had. And it was funny because she started – that banter, like Bill's just ripping me for being a Melbourne supporter, and that let let her like open the gate for her to that, start. That's like she's like, okay, this is a this is a space where we're allowed to take the piss out of so each other. So she started taking the piss out of the D's a little bit. Well, and then in the third term, in the third term, so the way she acted could have been permissible if you were a horrible supporter. Yeah. So <laughs> you were just supporting the D's as the, you're probably just about the best supporter of football I've ever seen. <laughs> Seldom would you turn, I reckon never would you turn to someone next year and go, cop that one. The D's oh. kicked another, you tool bag. <laughs> you're bloody well, not chirpy now. The only reason I don't do that is because on the flip side, we concede the next five. Yeah. So I don't like to get too cocky, but we're sitting there and you're supporting. We, we kicked a goal against the tide. And I went nuts. I was like, come on. And I was clapping. And wasn't smart ass. So it was just pure and utter celebration. Yeah. She turned around and said, oh, I, I think that's enough. Don't you think? Oh, I think that's enough. Yeah. And I thought it was because of my clapping. My clapping is loud. Like really, really loud. I, I don't think there's a clap loud enough <laughs> to be pulled up on at the MCG. If, if you're there for the footy and That's you true. get annoyed at the the, volu- the the decibel level of a clap, you should not be at the football. That's true. Um, but I thought, you know, she's quite old. Maybe I was clapping in her ear. I didn't mean to. So I, I gave her the benefit if of the doubt. If anything, she's old. She would appreciate the loud clap. She'd <laughs> so be going, I, didn't, I couldn't hear you clap yeah. before. That's, it's about time someone claps loudly near me so I can hear it. So she turned around, told me to pull up on my celebration. I went, oh, that was, you know, a bit weird banter, but maybe maybe I've done something to upset her. The cats then kick the next two or three. She is not a Geelong supporter. She's a Swan supporter with a cat scarf. She did a 180. She turned around. Turned around. After the Isaac Smith snag, <laughs> there was there was one particular action that rubbed me the wrong way. She gave me a Dusty Martin. She gave you the don't argue. Yeah. She hit you right between the chest. She did. And I went back a bit. Cause <laughs> look, I this isn't my this isn't my cup of tea. In the sense <laughs> that if if she had turned around and gave, gave a big fist pump to you know in your in your vicinity and went, can the cutters, cop that teeth, I would hate that. But Potentially, I could cop it. Yep. Contact, <laughs> that is off limits. Imagine if you did that to, uh, it wasn't an old, imagine you do that to an old lady. <laughs> the old lady's clapping behind you, doing, oh, for days, and you don't yeah. argue. Yeah, she yeah. goes backwards up her ass. And I, I turned to you, and you gave me the funniest face, and I was like, 
I was in she, shock. I was like, she said she was a Swan supporter. She was like, and it it all stemmed from my three mates getting into me at half time. It was like them getting into me made her think she could be involved in the banter. She then says, um, but so the line was blurred between are you taking the piss or were you actually annoyed annoyed at Caden? And now that you the Jongs are up, you want to? Sh- I thought I interpreted it as. She was shoving it at your face. She, she was wanted to make she, it hurt. She, she was. And then, so they kicked three in a row. Gorn kicks one against the tide. And then she turned around because at half time, I was saying, oh, look, we usually lie down. And, you know, I wouldn't want to say we, we're going to win this because the cats overrun us. Yeah. Gorn kicks one against the tide. We kick a couple settlers. She turns around and goes, so at what point do you guys lay down? And I was like, well, normally about this point, but we're not today. <laughs> <laughs> It was oh, just absolutely bizarre. If you're at the footy, anything's play on other than contact. You can't, you can't be. Do- I'll tell you what. I, I, you said to me earlier in the week. Do you want to come MCC, mate? We'll have a meal, a real good meal, a few drinks at the bar before we watch Dave's cats. Massive game. At the time, I went. This is fantastic. Yes, yep. yes, I'll come. Yeah. Needless to say, I didn't anticipate. <laughs> 10 degrees, pissing down, pissing down, pissing yeah. down rain and getting abused by old ladies as part of, part of the equation. Oh, but there you were. Uh, over the weekend, you would have seen this. Mm. Anthony Hudson, widely regarded uh, as the best commentator in the game by the by the people inside the game. Yep. So rarely, I reckon, do you ask... Um, do you ask the the common man, the back pocket pluggers, who's your favourite commentator? Rarely will they say Hado. Yep. But I've been lucky enough to meet a couple of people in the actual industry. And when you ask them who the favorite, com- who the best commentator is, a lot of the time they say Anthony Hudson. Yep. But D did, G didn't make a blue over the weekend. Yeah, he he made a big blue. Uh, centre half forward. Uh, who wasn't having, who wasn't having a shot at goals? Sean like, Darcy. Sean Darcy for the Dockers having a shot. I'm sure everyone listening has heard of it. If you haven't yet, I recommend you. It was all over Twitter, all over the socials. He's had a search off a goal. And Anthony Hudson, Brian Taylor style, has dropped an F-bomb. <laughs> dropped a massive F-bomb. Oh, but I don't know what he was trying to say. I don't think it technically... I don't think it is. You don't think it's an F-bomb? No, but it. it's... Even, even though I know the word he said, it still, on repeat, sounds like he swore. Do you, what do you think he was saying? Do you know what? I haven't looked into it. What do you I think, think he said? Thump. So, well, I thought it was thump, but in the comments, someone said thud. So, right. it, like Sean Darcy's forty-five out lines up, and all you hear is thump. It was like because <laughs> the the thing about swear words, the thing that really separates the good swear words from those bad swear words, <laughs> is what has that hard finish to it. Yeah, that real, that yeah. real, <laughs> like yeah, ah, oh, the. You can really throw your heart and soul yeah. into the the end sim, uh, syllable of that swear word, yeah. and it, all you heard through the microphone was, yeah, like it was like yeah. That. yeah. And it, <laughs> it sounded like he's dropped one of the like Brian Taylor did it deliberately. I, th- I think it might be the only time in history a commentator. He was like choking BT, and then he just went. But that moment was worth it. Like yeah, that, that. Yeah. Oh, of course. Tom Boyd's kicked a goal from fifty-five to win the Bulldogs their first grand final in a couple of centuries. Yeah. And he's just gone, you know what? This moment is worthy of an F-bomb. It and was, I reckon yeah. the people at Triple M working there would have gone, like the head honchos. Would they would have cared. They would have gone, that is great commentary. Yeah. Like, that is worthy. of Different story if Carlton beat Gold Coast on a Saturday night and bloody Sam Davis just popped one in to get within three goals. And you go, that was a fucking good goal, <laughs> Sammy Day. Remember? That would just be lazy commentary. That would be lazy commentary. <laughs> uh, but no, I, 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 BT was spot on. But it, it leads me to ask you the question. Mm. Uh, a lot of people do consider Hutto the best in the game. Who do you consider the best and worst commentators in AFL football? Um, well, I don't I don't know how mainstream I'm allowed to go, but... Go as mainstream as you want. James Brayshaw's my fave. Everyone's favourite, isn't it? Yeah. Just the tone of his voice. Can you give me a J- JB? Have you got a JB in you? Um, oh, unbelievable. Oh, stop it, Bill. I'm oh, looking Rog, at that one. Look at this style operator, Rog. Can he, you believe it? He's <laughs> just that... It, Excited all the time. He, he's the best commentator in the game for my taste. Second best, sorry. Um, uh, second can you best. guess my favourite? No, sorry. It's Dwayne, J- Jimmy B's my second best. Yep. Can you guess my favourite? We just said Dwayne. So. <laughs> Did I say Dwayne? <laughs> yeah, in that mumble jumble you said Dwayne. Yeah, Dwayne's my favourite. Someone's like Eddie Mook. No, nah, <laughs> Dwayne. Dwayne, Dwayne is, that's gold class. Yeah. Dwayne Russell. Remember met, the name. Yeah. Du- Dwayne Russell has a, a midday show on SEN. Um, and it's midday bandit. So you, the guarantee is you call, you get on. I love getting on and having a chat to Dwayne. 
<laughs> Spilling my thoughts. You can just call up about anything. G'day, Dwayne. Say this. <laughs> yeah, have a good chat. So, so Dwayne, I've just been, you know, struggling a little bit. What's going on? <laughs> Where do you stand on BT? Uh, loved him. Yeah. Till about 2018. And you've fallen off the perch, I off have, the BT I terrain. Have, I have. The BT bandwagon. I think he's a bit. Uh, he's. So he's purposely. Uh, he purposely mucks up which is funny yeah so when he's purposely mucking up people's names or you know there's, there's a bit of swagger a bit bit of um bit of theater to that you think when he when he does a <laughs> like is that a, do you like that i or? do like that no yeah. so i do like the theater funny, of that because usually if you don't like bt number one thing you dislike is the the well, me time on the name no nah, i don't mind that sort of stuff it, it's theater it's a bit funny but he makes genuine mistakes often yeah right so uh there's, there's a part of it like when he does stuff like that, it can irk me a little yeah. bit. But I don't, I don't mind Brian. I'm not in the hate Brian bandwagon. Um, I'm just not in the as pumped as what I was a couple of years ago about him. Well, put it this way: I think his commentary of Noah Bolter losing his eyesight on Triple M, <laughs> very good, was quite possibly the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. Like that is my favorite style of comedy to a T. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a just a light ribbing. If you haven't listened to it yet. Oh my God, Jay Z. When the news breakers out at Triple M, uh, mentioned that Noah Bolter doesn't have the greatest vision, and BT's run with that as Jay Z's reported that Noah Bolter's literally legally blind. And every time yep. Bolter gets near the ball, BT would just commentate, and uh, Higgins, in, oh, well, not Higgins, Jack Rewald ambles it to Cochin, and Noah Bolter's running around aimlessly. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was some of the funniest commentary oh, ever. There. It was so funny when he starts um, talking about Fred Hollow's foundation. Oh, the Fred Hollow's bit got me an absolute <laughs> ripper. Now, I'm massive in the BT camp. Are uh, you a Kelly Underwood fan? I don't mind Kelly Underwood. I okay. don't mind her. Um, a lot of people d- don't like her, but I think she does... Uh, Justice, I think Serv- she does. Serv- serviceable job, yeah. Not my, not my flavor. No, uh, we wanted to bring a segment into the show. Yes, we do. We've never done a segment. This is a, this is a, a world exclusive for the back. You, pocket you pocket. wanted to bring in um, some sound effects. Oh, we did, and they, they will be coming in. We got <laughs> curtains this week. We got. <laughs> We got curtains and segments this week. Next week we're gonna have sound effects. Sound effects and guests. Yeah. <laughs> By episode five, we'll be bloody having Dustin Martin on with his Norm Smiths. All right. So, what what's the segment's name? Run. Well, you can you can run us through the segment. Is it called Goals Behinds Out of Bounds? Yeah. Nice. Goals Behinds Out of Bounds. Oh, that's nice. Um. So this is where we talk about a goal. <laughs> is there any other show? <laughs> podcast TV in history where live on the podcast or live on the program they've gone what, what are we naming this segment <laughs> oh yeah that'll do all right yeah okay we're running with goals behind points yeah GBP GPP goals behind points oh no goals it's not goals behind GBO GBO that sounds like a board meeting like oh we got the annual oh, GBO this week it's beyond oh, well, I hope <laughs> Linda's not there again <laughs> Linda's always lurking um, yeah so goals is like something positive we've seen for the week Yep. Uh, behind. We're not sure of. Well, yeah, behind I thought would be negative, but behind, it's still a score. It's still a score. That could win goal. you a game. So a behind is something, you know, we're a bit iffy about that we've seen throughout the week of yep. AFL, and then out on the falls, you've just missed the mark, missed the target. In and other words, it's a green, yellow, right? Red, it is a traffic light system, but this is a footy podcast, so we'll just go the, the GBO. And um, working on the segment, we haven't told each other uh, what we've got, so it'd be funny if we just said the same things, but... I reckon there's a chance. Do we want to start with the out in the full first? Uh yeah, we'll go out in the full. You you hit, hit me between the hit me between the arms. Uh, the conversation about loaning players in the AFL, I I'm not really for it. I d- I, I, I I think it's out on the full for mine. Yeah, I don't think it's out on the full for me. That's <laughs> that's behind is where I would go. With that I think there yeah. is some merit to that. And uh, where where I where I love it in the Premier League and other sports that that may have it is if you've got a rookie on your list. Um, that, you know, it, it might happen, say for Carlton, right? Say uh, we had a young rogue, say Tom DeConning, right? A couple of years ago. Yep. Fresh on the scene. He hasn't played a game in a couple of years. Uh, some Gold Coast have a ruck crisis. Wouldn't it be nice for us to go give Tom DeConning some game time for the Gold Coast? He can develop his young body, get some games under his belt, come back to us a better player next year and Gold Coast deal with their injury crisis. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. But where I think it differs in where struggling football is in soccer you have 11 players on the pitch and then you have sort of 10 players on your bench and then you have the reserves so yeah 
it doesn't really hurt you to lose a player. Mm. But I reckon you'll find if someone lent a player out in the AFL and they went to another club and they were dominating, that club would really want them back. Yeah. Like they, there's scope for them to get in the 22. So that would be the only issue I... Uh, I saw some seven. things during the week saying that like um, there's like key intel within footy clubs that if someone got hands on that, it could, I, I don't know, I don't want to say bring down an opposition football club, but there's like sort of uh, intellectual property within footy clubs that you don't want getting out necessarily. I suppose yeah, people a, get a, nice traded. Mid, a nice little midway point would be a mid-season trade. Or or open or up until mid season you can trade with any club you want, for example. Like there's a cutoff point. But you could be there going, Gee, Gold Coast, we're out of Ruckman. We desperately need a Ruckman. Demons will give you will give you who's your second or third choice Ruckman? Who's your third choice? Um so it's like it's Gorn, Jackson, was Proust. Uh, say you had Prucy still. Yeah. Say for yeah, example. Yeah. Well we want Prucy and you could be there going, Well He's not all yeah. the chips are in our hand because all the chips are on our side of the table yep. because you need a Ruckman. Otherwise, you can't compete. Give us a first-round draft pick. And you get a first-round draft pick for Bruce and Gold Coast would be relatively happy because they've got a Ruckman for their season. Yeah. Um, but what's, that's a fair fair out in the full. What's yours out, out on the full? Uh, I had two, but I'll go with one. Um, night games at the Gold Coast. <laughs> <laughs> Not because it's uh, the Sli- Gold Coast. Slippery? It's slippery. It, it is. The humidity, it, it gets, especially at night time, it gets so humid that the quality between Carlton and Gold Coast, and often is when you're watching Gold Coast games at Metricon, yeah. it's deplorable, the standard of football. It doesn't make it easier for them, does it? Like, they're an up-and-coming side. They're not the best skilled side. Um, and then they got to play with a ball that's like a cake of soap every yeah, week. Not for me at all. I think that they need to... I heard Eddie Maguire talking about a possible move to Tasmania and he said if they're going to do it, they can't do it sort of half ass like they did the Gold Coast. Like he's in that stadium is just a bit, mm. like, if you, <laughs> like if you didn't do it, build an Optus stadium like they did at Perth. If they had a roof, air conditioned, whatever, perhaps it would get rid of the humidity yep. and it'd be, be better. Sort that out, Gold Coast. Otherwise, we, we're not going to keep lowering our, the quality of football for night games. Are we moving on to the behinds? We're moving on to the so, behinds. It's not negative. It's uh, iffy. Like you've yeah. scored, but you haven't kicked a goal. My behind was <laughs> similar to yours, and we didn't know this beforehand. But mine was footy at Ballarat. Yeah. Okay. Not. Not. And look, I'm I'm someone who lives in Geelong, and when the D's come to Geelong, even though we get rolled, it's exciting. So yep. I do understand. Um, if you live in Ballarat and the AFL comes to town, how good, how good for the town. Yep. Um, you can stop trying to flog fake bits of gold <laughs> up, yeah. up at the mines yeah. <laughs> and you can actually sell some tickets and stuff at the footy. But it, like they couldn't have picked a colder day to play that. And I know that they don't know when they're doing the fixturing, but Saturday was freezing. Yeah. And to see the Brizzy Lions boys just run around freezing their nuts off, I felt a little bit bad. And I'm a bit iffy about the Ballarat footy. Okay. Well, th- is it purely Ballarat, or would you extend that out to your Canberra's and whatnot? Like other so your Northern Territory. Alice Springs is a spectacle. Yeah, um, I don't know what the D's call it, and this isn't me being D's biased. It's something of the land, game of the land, or something. But um, the amount of culture and the amount of uh, people that come out to it, and it's just so exciting. You see the little Indigenous kids getting around. You know, what about I- Tasmania? Uh, well, cut from the same cloth, I reckon. Yeah, Tasmania and Ballarat. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, I do understand it, but you know, I'm I'm a little bit iffy. Okay, <laughs> just leave it in the capital cities. You reckon the the big boy stadiums? But I'm from regional Geelong, so yeah, I yeah. don't know. I don't know where do well, I. How do you sit on GMHBA? <laughs> well, I want them to demolish that yeah, hole. Yeah, me too. <laughs> to be honest, I would have thought so. My behind um, is Richmond in terms of. They lost a couple on the trot. They could potentially lose this week to St Kilda, and I'm not one. I'm not saying oh the dynasty's over because we know they'll come good in September. But I was watching the game on the weekend, and they were. It was unrichman like the amount of broken tackles that, that the amount of tackles they couldn't lay. I don't know if you watched the game, but it, for me it was so frustrating watching them try to lay because I tipped Richmond, so I was watching them pretty closely, yep. and they were. Just not laying their tackles. And it was very frustrating for me. So the behind is sort of a warning where Richmond, if you don't pull your act together, you could see yourself with a lot of teams on the rise, Melbourne on the rise, the dogs on the rise. You could 
potentially see a spot in the four lost. Where so I I'm not worried at all about the Tigers. I, I think they somehow get top four, and then whether it's first or fourth, you know, they've gone up to Brisbane for qualifying finals before. They yep. just get it done wherever they land in the four. Um, but I would be interested to get your view on like a pies. Are they in the behinds or are they out on the full? No, the pies, well, out on the full? well, they're, uh, they are no, out on the full sounds harsh because it sounds, you know, North Melbourne around the full. That's true. But Collingwood, uh, they're behind because, you know, it has been a tragedy, but put it this way, there is 0% chance of winning the grand final this year. And in my eyes, are pretty much, you know, a 0% chance of well, making the top four. Another question, Lions. Lions yeah. in a similar boat they're to the, the Tigers at the moment because they similar. were expected to be top two. Yeah, and they're nowhere near it. And uh, their only win is against the Pies after the siren, and the Pies don't look like that much top. Yeah, so they're the a big worry. Signs. They're a big worry. Oh, the goals, goals for this week. Do you want me to hit yeah, you? Hit off? off. My six pointer is. It seems like the whole league is really embracing playing youth, trust in youth. Uh, a few players, uh, Nick Cox for us, and he's he's exciting me. Two hundred centimeter wingman, clean between. Below the le- uh, beto- <laughs> below the knees, <laughs> clean between the armpits, clean between the knees, <laughs> uh, uh, and he can hit targets left and right. Very exciting. The whole Sydney Swans, like the, their rising stars, and this week, ju- my boy Justin McInerney, Banyol lad, your man, yep, he's come up and just another one they've plucked out of nowhere that just seems to be kicking goals. And from the Hawks, gee, I'm excited about CJ. Yes, how yeah. good does CJ look? So, he does. Uh, in short, play the kids. Yeah, no, not a bad call. The club's playing the kids. They're reaping the rewards at the moment. No, I rate that. Um, and it's good to see young players come in and make an impact uh, like in your best 22 because sometimes you just think like they're going to take a couple of years, but it's good to see people out of the last draft, your Goldens and whatnot. How ex- There's nothing a lot more exciting in footy than when you see, oh, in this week, you know, you pick 63 from two years ago. That excites me because it's like, We've got one for free here. Yeah. Like, there's a bit of pressure when your pick three comes in and they don't seem to be performing too much. And you're like, oh. But the pick 63 is the big free hit. Yeah, for sure. Um, Yeah, go on. What's your big winner? Uh, my what's big your six pointer? So, this is going to be a bit of a weird one, but I think you'll understand. I like weird. The Bombers really competitive on Thursday night. Mm-hmm. Um, I obviously tipped them for the spoon in me, um, in me, me season predictions. You and did? And... You know, after the first, you've been two. reminded of that one. Uh, not yet. Not yet. After the first two rounds, though, um, you know, I was quite happy with them. Very pretty, yes. But the last couple of weeks, uh, they got the win against the Saints, dominated the Saints, and then to come out and be really competitive against the Swans, I was impressed with. But yep. my six pointer goes to Dyson Heppel's post game speech. Oh, I saw that spine tingling stuff, yeah. Dyson. Yeah. Oh my god, I would run through a brick wall for that bloke. He does. Uh, he's a bloke who I've questioned as a leader sometimes, sort of in the Mark Murphy mould of you know we're just the captain because you're the best player, but you're not the best leader. Yeah. But that struck me like he was he's a leader. He, he's a great leader of he men. He didn't mention every player there, but he went through to a couple of key ones and it was just unbelievable. It was, it was really, really good. And the way he, he loves that club. Yeah. Fair play to him because he's had a lot of mates leave over recent years. Mm-hmm. Zach Merritt, there's talk about him potentially going. Uh, I reckon he will go. I reckon he will too. Uh, well, I've, you know, we got no intel. But no, I just, no I, intel. I, I just think I just got the hunch that he will. But a Dyson Apple, he's never leaving. He bleeds uh, red and black. Yeah. And the way he was like, we're not far away, uh, and we haven't been this competitive for a few few years. We get to training, we rock up, and we're not far away, boys. I was, yeah, I was pumped. Love that. I love it because nothing is warms a heart more than when you see a ripper speech that just revs everyone up. I think that's as good as it gets in footy. Well, and I think it's easier to rev a team up. Pre-game, but to be uh, uh, really calm, but get your message across, but inspire after a loss, I think is a tricky one. And, and a big it. six pointer is that the SNM media have allowed us to see it. Like we're unbelievable. Like, yep. Give us more vision like that. I think that documentary, the AFL documentary, what's it called making their mark. Yep. Uh, my inspire a new wave of AFL media where they go, gee, get letting people see behind the vision, even when we're not going so well. It, ma- it makes them feel a part of the club and makes them show... Because I, I used to have a bit of a perception that AFL players don't really care or don't care as much as the supporters do. Mm. But when you see the footage of, you know, clubs not going well, like Gold Coast and Stewie Duke over the part, and you see the footage of them going off in the rooms, yeah, oh, no, they do care. Yeah. 
So that's great footage. And they've got the pressure of everyone, um, you know, the external pressure of the media and the audience. And, yeah, like the, the amount of pressure they put on themselves each week is, is crazy. Massive news today. Breaking news. As big a news as it will possibly be for the Back, po- po- the back Pocket Plug Up podcast, considering this is in my eyes or the whole reason why I wanted to become a back pocket, this is the back pocket plugger. And that's Cade Simpson. Well, yeah, uh, Dylan Friends getting the absolute scoop. Um, what an unbelievable podcast that is, and how well has he done for himself? Oh, it's unbelievable. I, yeah, I listen every week. Um, I was a bit of a Johnny come lately to the uh, the Dill Buckley podcast. Uh, you know, well, I still haven't listened to it, but I've heard good things. <laughs> oh, well, it's unbelievable. It is very good. I, I've only I, listened to the occasional episode. But, um, yeah, so... Dill, obviously, he's had uh, your man, Cade Simpson, on the pod. My hero. Your hero. And that's why I tagged you in it on Instagram. Cade Simpson's just said to Dill Buckley, like, I am still seething that I'm not playing. Like, I, reckon, I want to be playing. Do you reckon he came to Dill and basically said, I want to announce myself to the league? That nah, I'm, I reckon uh, it was like, nah, well, I can't imagine Cade Simpson doing yeah, that. I but that was I, was thinking, I was thinking, if he gets picked up mid-season... It will be off the back of him saying that on the podcast. 100%. So, I, it frustrates me greatly to hear this because when Kate Simpson retired last year, he wasn't retired, he was sacked. I know that sounds harsh. It does sound True. harsh. But yeah. the club said he wanted to play on. This isn't like he's changed his mind, he's retired and gone, you know what, I miss this footy thing, get me back in. Yeah. The club said to him, we don't have a spot for you next year. Um we love you. You're still playing. Um, he was playing unbelievable football. He was top six best and fairest still or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but we went and got Williams and Saad. It makes enough sense. But for, there's still a lot of list cloggers on our list, I believe. A, a handful. I would have loved to have seen semi keep his spot. But now it opens the door for a fairy tale. Like he's basically said that he only wants to go to a club that is a legitimate chance of finals or will play finals and a legitimate mm. chance of a flag. Yeah. He gets picked up in a mid-season draft. Mm. Bob's your uncle. He could win a premiership. Yeah. Break my heart to a degree to see him play 346 <laughs> games for the Baggers go and play 10 and another and win a flag. But it, I'd be so happy for him at the same time. Yeah. I just I can't believe like that. Thank God there's a mid-season draft. Absolutely. But just the, the amount of un- under- unrest that he had and like the frustration and the fire in his belly to keep playing, the competitiveness. And the way he sort of said... um look, i probably got to get over this. Like, I I probably won't get drafted again and i just got to get over it. i got to really settle with not playing footy because over the summer he's running, he's training, and he just wants to still play. Well, do you think a club would consider him? Yes. I think if you're there going mid-season draft, you've got a spot, you know, some of them long-term injury list, and you're a premiership contender, why wouldn't you add Gates Simpson to your list? Yeah. For nothing. It, I'm, I, I assume he's not putting a price on his head of, it's nah. not a money thing, he doesn't need the money. I would, I can only presume that he's doing it because he wants to win a premiership, play footy, play finals. I, I think of all the teams in the top eight, he gets a game. I would think so. Well, uh, if... Like a, a Geelong would love to have him just sweeping around. Absolutely. Um, Richmond, they'd have him. Yeah, I think most clubs would uh, would have him. Maybe not necessarily getting a game every week. Uh, half, there are a lot of good half backs now. But Jay, if you're a premiership contender and you know you could have Simpson on your list heading into finals, instead of, or yeah, you know, would you rather pick up Cade Simpson for a year or pick up a rookie who's been overlooked in a couple of drafts? Who do, who knows? They could be the next Mickey Gibbons or something like that. Mm. But um, if you're looking for a flag tilt, I reckon Cade Simpson could be the way to go. I would, I'm imagining the fairy tale of Carlton. We've got a Nick Newman and Caleb Marchbank on the long-term injury list. Yep. I'd love for us to go, oh, Simo, we'll pick it back up. We, we are very chance of finals. Imagine if we did Bulldogs won the flag and Simo plays in the fl- flag. That would be one of the all-time great It stories. would be the greatest fairy tale of all time. He gets picked up again and wins the flag. But mm. we won't get too ahead of ourselves. I guarantee you we're not picking him back up. But, Jay, if someone else did, I would be stoked for him. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, and, and that's just us looking after one of our uh, back pocket plugger. You know. The back pocket plugger. I, I, I look forward <laughs> the to the... back pocket plugger. I look forward to the day that another back pocket knocks him off his mantle, but we'll wait and see. Mm, yeah, a little bit to go for Jay Lockhart. Yeah, correct. 
All right, guys. I think that's it. I think we're done for the ep. Episode number two. We got the curtains. We've uh, curtains and segments. Got curtains and segments. Next week, you, you'd want to wait and see what we got. And I'm not prepared <laughs> to come out and say that we've got Hardwick and Martin, but <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Anything's possible. And big exclusives if we oh, do get them. Absolutely. Uh, Rog, thanks for joining me. My pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks everyone for listening and tuning in to the Back Pocket Plugger Podcast. Uh, we appreciate the support, and we'll see you very soon. Cheers.